I'm Chrissy, and I'm the Creative Eclectic. Are you ready for a story? Today's story is all about me. So, I hope you've got a cup of tea or a coffee and that you've got a few minutes just to sit back, relax, and just listen to a little story. So, the reason I'm telling this story is I've been asked to share my story um, by a number of the subscribers to my newsletter and to my Facebook fans and Instagram followers. So this story is pretty quick, um, maybe. <laughs> so I am the youngest of four children. My eldest sister is 11 years older than me. Um, then I have a brother who I sort of adore. And then I have my next sister who is seven years older than me. And she did a lot of my bringing up when I was young. So um, I grew up in Brisbane, Australia, and my parents lived in the same house for 58 years from my mum lived in the same street from when she was 12 until she was 79 so they're pretty well established I have lots of nieces and nephews and I adore all of them I also have a very barky dog um, his name is Delphi and she sort of takes over my Instagram feed, my personal one. Um, and I, I'm really lucky and blessed to have a really good life. I was born, well, they're not sure whether I was born with it or I developed it when I was under 12 months old. I... Um, have a hearing loss in both ears and it created some challenges when I was first born. So I um, had to do speech therapy and um, physical therapy or physiotherapy every day until I went to high school, so around about 12 years. I, um, in primary school, wore hearing aids in both ears. Um, my mother had to fight to send me to a public school. They wanted me to go to a school for the deaf and she refused. Um, and as you can imagine, kids are pretty cruel, so I suffered a lot of bullying because of my hearing aids. I had them flushed down the toilet. I had them stood on, um, stolen, um, all sorts of things. Because kids are, were really cruel in, in the 70s and 80s. Maybe it was, that sounds really so long ago. Anyway, um, I continued to wear hearing aids um, until I left school and then just developed um, constant ear infections. So I had to learn, well, I already knew, but I had to rely a lot on lip reading um, because the ear infections prevented me from wearing hearing aids. Um, and so... Um, that's been a bit of a challenge, but in saying that was a challenge, my mum would sign me up for anything that required you to listen hard. So she signed me up for music and speech and drama and theatre and singing and <laughs> anything where you had to listen. And I must say, it's pretty exhausting but, and I hated it, but I love music now and I can 
hear it if I turn it up loud. So I left school, went to work as a receptionist. Oh, another job where you're required to listen. And then um, went to college as well and studied part-time. Discovered I was really good at business computing. Um, and I also actually will backtrack a little bit. Um, as a kid, I loved to draw was always drawing. My family is pretty creative. My eldest sister is amazing at the piano. Um, my other sister, she can sew anything. She is pretty talented. Um, I think they both knit and do embroidery and I, my grandmother's one knitted and crocheted and sewed and the other one did the most beautiful, um, she called it fancy work, but it was embroidery. Um, my brother is pretty talented too. He was always good at sport, but he was also very good at um, building things and fixing things and very mechanically minded. So, um, but they were a lot older than me, so when I was starting high school, they'd all left home and were having families and stuff like that. So I was um, left alone a lot in terms of I got to pursue what I wanted to do. So I did lots of singing and I did drama and... Um, yeah, but in year eight, I or first year of high school, my art teacher told my mum and me that I was really bad at drawing and I didn't have an artistic bone in my body. And as a 13-year-old, I believed this expert and then I put down my pen and paper and hardly drew at all. Yeah, I'd doodle on bits of paper, but wouldn't draw. So I concentrated on trying to be the best that I could at school, trying to do subjects, business subjects, which were logical and I could control, but I didn't love, I didn't have a passion for any of them. And I met my husband, got married, had a family, bought a house, or well, maybe not in that order, got divorced. Um, all by the time I was 30. Got graduated uni too. Um, and I had started a career at um, the state public service and I was trying to work out what direction to go in next and my girlfriend suggested that I apply for a job at the Federal Public Service and I did and got that and I was working in HR, Human Resources and it was a really helping role. So I would help people who were injured at work or injured outside of work, help them return to work and help them sustain their employment and do plans to help people perform the best that they could. So my role was all about helping people, whether it be, and also helping their managers so that we could, as an organisation, support people. Because I believe people are an organisation's biggest asset. But with that job came a lot of stress. And, and yeah, I got promoted and I um, did projects and I, but it wasn't what I loved. Like I loved helping people, but there was lots of people who didn't want help and didn't 
want to be better. Um, I suffered a really bad shoulder injury at work and it took nine months to get back to full-time work. And in that nine months, I discovered paper craft. I discovered scrapbooking. But it was really hard to do that with an injured shoulder because uh, it wasn't conducive to... Um, my injury wasn't conducive to be able to do that. But as I recovered, I... Um, my daughter's best friend, who she'd been friends with since she was born, literally, um, she and her um, one of the significant women in her life, they scrapbooked together. So she one day she turned up with this huge crate of stuff, and it's all scrapbooking stuff. So she and my daughter sat down with their photos and scrapbooked together. And it was really beautiful. And I had thousands of photos. And I thought, well, oh, this might be something that I can do. So I went to a party with a company that did scrapbooking stuff. And they... I bought a few things, but really didn't appeal to me. And then I bought my first scrapbooking magazine. Oh my goodness, that was the end of it for me. Oh, it was so much more than just squares cut out and maps on a page. It was remarkable. These pages were an absolute work of art. Like some of them I couldn't even envisage ever attempting. But I decided to find a middle ground. So something between that and something a bit less simple or a bit more complex than the simple stuff that I'd been showing at this party. I went with my sister to a stamping up party and my sister actually hosted a stamping up party and it was the first card that I made. Now, my boss at work, she was a card maker and so was our executive director. Um, and they were great card makers, but for me, I didn't get the whole card making thing. It's like, well, you spend 50 bucks to make a card that someone's going to throw away. That's how I thought. And it's not like that at all. Well, it can be, but it's not for me. Not now. So I used to say, no, no, I'm not going to try card making. I changed teams. Um, and my team leader who was situated a thousand kilometres away. She was a card maker, but she was a phenomenal card maker. And the girl that I sat next to, um, Julie, she was a card uh, crafter as well. She was really crafty. She could do anything. So I received this card from my team leader, and it was amazing. It was the most amazing card I had ever seen. When you, it looked like a book, but then when you opened it out, it formed a star and it had little cutout pieces and it was just to die for. So I went, oh, I've got a friend's birthday coming up next week. She would really love that. So I'm going to recreate that. So the week between Christmas and New Year, I looked at the card, worked out how to do it, when really what I should have done was run my team leader and said, hey, can you send me the instructions? But no, you don't do anything the easy way. There wasn't any Google really the same there as there is now. 
YouTube wasn't a, a big thing. And so I created this card. And then I created another one. And then I went, oh, there might be something to this card making. So I decided I was going to host a stamping up party because I wanted to get some stamps and some products and surely people would want to buy stuff. So I did that and I met the lovely Kim Byrne. Now Kim um, hosted classes at home so I started going to her Friday night classes. Um, I met a few people and I just fell in love with stamping up products. And I fell in love with them because they were all coordinated. There was some really easy solutions. I didn't have to go and try to find a matching ribbon that matched the ink, that matched the paper, that matched the pen. I didn't have to do any of that work. So I think maybe I could be a little bit lazy. So that appealed to me because I didn't have to think and I had to think all the time in my regular job, like all the time. So I would come home from work and I would make a card and it might be two o'clock in the morning and I'd be making a card. But what that allowed me to do is it allowed me to switch off from work and put all those worries that I had about our clients and um, allowed me to put them aside. Other people run, some people play music. For me, it was turn the radio on or put on my headphones and just create. So I, after about six months, the Kim Byrne came to me and said, you know, you're spending a lot of money on card making. She said, you know, you have more than met your quarterly minimums in one order. So I think you might want to think about becoming a, a demonstrator just to get a discount. So I thought, all right, a discount sounds good, especially when you get, at that time, you used to get 30% off your th first order. They have other incentives now, but, um, and at that time, you couldn't choose what you had in your starter kit. You had to have what they decided. So that was in 2009 that I signed up. Kim and I went to my first convention in Sydney in 2010. I started doing card making classes at home and in 2010 I had a team member sign up. That was pretty remarkable. I didn't expect to get a team member. I was a hobbyist. I had a full-time job. This was just something I did on the side. So that continued. Um, my full-time job became part-time because I was unwell. I was getting up in the morning, checking my email, work emails, while I'm having my coffee and checking our work emails while my husband's driving us to work. I, um, I didn't say much about my husband. I need to tell you about him. I met him in 2002 um, after I divorced my daughter's father, who is an excellent dad and I'm really lucky and blessed that he is such a great dad and that he loves our daughter like you wouldn't believe. And so I think he spoils her a little bit. 
Um, but anyway, um, Steve, my husband, is just remarkable and so supportive and such a really great cheerleader. So he um, has just said, you need to do what makes you happy. And if I'm happy, he's really happy. So that's really sweet. And so he um, said when I asked him about joining Stamping Up, he goes, well, if it, you're spending a lot of money. If it saves you a bit of money, then, yeah, that would be okay. <laughs> little did he know where that one little stamp and one ink pad and one piece of paper would lead. So in 2016, when I was, work was so hard. I was in a senior HR role, um, basically equivalent of an assistant director role. I had an amazing, amazing team but I was just burnt out. I was getting up, trying to do work at six o'clock in the morning, doing work in the car as Steve's driving us to work. Then I would work from 7.30 to five, sometimes seven to five. Sometimes I'd work till six, sometimes I'd work till seven depending on what was going on. Then I'd come home, have dinner, and do some more work. And it got to the point where my doctor said, either you choose your job or you choose a different doctor because I'm not gonna let you kill yourself. So when your doctor says that, um, that's a bit of a wake up call. And there was a bit of an incident at work um, which left me so distraught um, to the point where I couldn't go near the building, I couldn't even go to the shopping centre that was next to the building. It was pretty, in the seam of things, the incident itself wasn't a big deal. Oh, it was a little deal, but not a huge deal. But I had burnt myself out. I had no resilience. And I had no time to pay for crafts because I was always thinking about work. I'd wake up at two o'clock in the morning, write myself notes about something that I had to do at work. Um, I was missing, uh, for five years, I missed every opening and closing mass at school. Like my daughter went to a private Catholic school. Um, I missed every opening and closing mass because I was travelling with work for five years. It wasn't even planned. I couldn't have planned it like that. Um, I just wasn't happy. So I went with the information from my doctor. I went to my manager and said, this is the information I have. And she goes, do you want a redundancy? Yep. And so in 2016, I finished with the public service. And it was a really scary yet exciting time. We agreed I'd have six months off. We renovated our kitchen, which was incredibly stressful. We ripped out walls. We... Um, ripped out the whole floor of the whole downstairs of our house, um, lived out of boxes for six months, like we didn't have walls and it was just um, very stressful, but it was worth every second of it. And then when it came time to go back to work, I was in the January. I was really anxious in January 2017. I went, I've been out of work for six months. I don't know 
if I can go back and do this sort of work again. And I was sort of running my running classes for my friends during um, while trying to juggle my job and my family. And to be honest, none of them were getting the right attention. So my husband said, why don't you give teaching papercraft full time a go? So here I am. And I must say, I love what I do. I get to share and show people how to make beautiful things and things that they're proud of. And last year, I even managed to share a wonderful experience with my friend Vicky. She had never been to the US before and we met in Orlando and we, she's from New Zealand and we had met through Stamping Up and we got to go to the Kennedy Space Station together which is pretty special considering it was the lead up to the anniversary of the moon landing and we also got to go to the Stamping Up 30th anniversary event and we went to Disney World and we had a really great time but I also got to share this event with a couple, quite a few other demonstrators. I got to share it with my upline from Stamping Up, Kim, and that was something really special and at that time I had promoted to, um, so Stamping Up has levels and I promoted to a silver elite which means that I got to walk across the stage in front of 7,000 people and celebrate my promotion so that was pretty fantastic but what was more fantastic is when I was buying the ticket I didn't know if well, who was going I thought that I was going on my own so my husband said and he was in hospital, mind you. Um, he's, and I was sitting beside his bed and he said, why don't you buy us both a ticket and I'll go with you. So I bought him a ticket and he came with me. And he had a great time. And for the first time in nine years, he picked up a stamp and he stamped and the joy that was on his face when he created this really cute little card. And he says to me, my card's better than yours. And that's really quite okay. And it was, because I didn't really put the effort into mine. But it was awesome. And the joy that he felt that I witnessed when he used the die cutting machine for the first time and he goes, wow, that's really cool. I can see why you like doing this. So to be able to share that with him was something really special. And he encourages me and I'm very lucky I'm lucky that he is one of my biggest cheerleaders. So the other special thing that I got to do in the last 12 months is that one of the ladies who decided to join my team um, in 2010, she recruited her first team member. So after nine years, she has her very first team member and it's just, and so she promoted her level. So that is just spectacular. And also another team member of mine, she asked me to go to the Stamping Up on stage event in Auckland, New Zealand. She didn't have a passport. 
She never travelled outside Australia. She had not ever been to a Stamping Up event before. And so I got to share her very first event with her. We got to create together. We got to do a bit of sightseeing together. And it was a really significant moment in her life. And I was really blessed to be part of that. So, Stamping Up has brought me so many things. It's allowed me to meet people who I would never have met. One of my closest friends now um, found me through my Stamping Up website and we just clicked. And we mightn't see each other all the time, but she pops in and we just chat. And her creative pathway has gone a different direction now, so she no longer does a lot of stamping or paper craft. But without stamping up and without that beautiful connection and that love of creating and and being spending time together in a social setting and that's a good thing about stamping you can do it by yourself or you can do it with other people and I must say when I do it with other people I rarely get anything finished whereas if I can sit down and focus and do it by myself ah, oh, I get so much stuff done but it's just being able to connect with people is lovely Stamping Up has given me so much confidence. It has made me feel a little less self-conscious. So a year ago, I wouldn't have done a video. I'd get up and teach a class, but I would never do a video. So today, I'm doing a video and you actually see my face. So, and whether that's a good thing or not, it's a whole other thing. But um, yeah, that's a bit about my stamping up story. I hope you enjoyed it. And I really hope that you check out some of my other videos. And that I'm, you allow me to share your paper crafting journey, whether it be stamping up or whether it be something else, with you. Thanks for watching.